Alrighty, welcome back to a very exciting video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a little technique how you can get the muzzle velocity of your rifle without using a chronograph. Much anticipated video, actually quite easy to do. You don't need any fancy things. The only things you'll need is some sort of measuring device, hopefully a vernier if you've got one, it doesn't have to be digital. We have done this with a ruler, by the way. You're gonna need some ammo, you're gonna need a rifle, you're gonna need a rear bag, and you're gonna need a range finder. So first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna jump down over to the zero range and actually get our rifle all zeroed up. We wanna get a rock solid zero. In my case in South Africa, we always zero, well not everyone, but I zero at 100 meters, cause then I always know I'm dialing up. So after we've done that, we're gonna jump into the meat and potatoes of the exercise and really show you guys what we need to be doing in our software to make sure we can get sort of as close of a muzzle velocity as possible. Now this technique is not rock solid, but it's gonna get you really, really close. And I've actually won some matches using this technique, sort of positional, precision rifle style matches in the past. Long before I had an old school optical crony, I've also had a magneto speed, but now I have the lab radar. And at the end, what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna put the lab radar next to us and see how close we actually came to sort of reverse engineering our muzzle velocity. So without further ado, let's do the zero, and then we're gonna jump back to the long range side of the course and actually get some data in order to true our muzzle velocity to our rifle. It's gonna be exciting, make sure you stick around. If you haven't already, do subscribe now, smash that button. And guys, if you wanna help out the channel, please share these videos with your mates. I'd really appreciate that. It's been a long morning in the rain getting everything set up. Let's do some shooting. Okay, so we have our 100 meters zero, absolutely perfect. We've now moved back to 645 meters from the target. Now, before I show you guys what we're gonna be doing in the software, I wanna thank our sponsors, Modular Driven Technologies, for sponsoring today's video. MDT, thank you so much for partnering with us and making videos like this possible. Today, we're shooting the little 20 inch 6.5 Creedmoor. It's in an MDT ESS chassis. You can see that set up behind me, looking right at home, ready to go. Anyway, our target is at 645 meters. Now I've put up a little bit of a barn door target. That means basically the target's bigger than we would probably normally shoot at this distance. Now the reason I've done that is I don't wanna mess around on a small little plate because what we wanna do today is purely see where on that plate we're hitting. Now vitally important when you wanna do this, you can do it on a smaller target, but it is a little bit more tricky. So I've got a smaller target right next to it. So once we have ourselves dialed in on the big target, we're gonna head over and engage the little target just to make sure that our dope is really good. So another key tip, you wanna do this on a freshly painted target. Now this morning it was raining quite a bit when we got here. So our target spray job is not 100%, but we're gonna roll with it. Let's get on the gun and do some shooting. Right, so we're behind the rifle. What you wanna do, you wanna make sure that in your ballistic calculator, in this case, we're using Strolock Pro. I think the normal one can do this too. Well worth the Pro version, by the way. I've, that was one of the first ballistic apps I got. I like Strolock because it's really simple. Anyway, so you wanna make sure that you've got the center of your ball measured to the center of your optic. Now, I use the vernier to do that. In some cases, you can get away if you have a ruler and you want it very, um, just super basic, it can be done. So just take your time, make sure that measurement is good. On a Howa rifle, there's a nice little hole on the side here for some gases to exit. 
in case you load them a little bit hot just measure from that to sort of where my rings come together and i generally find that that gets me in the game so our target's at 645 i've put in a slower speed than expected in this specific case to sort of demonstrate for you guys now i believe that bullet's going to fly over the target the reason i've done that is because in front of my target the grass is quite tall so if i shoot short it's going to kind of be difficult to spot it another thing that's going to be tricky today it's very rainy very moist uh it's very wet it's, it's not better <laughs> anyway um i should be able to see the bullets as they fly over that target and hopefully they don't just clog into the ground so without further ado we're gonna put one round down we dialed 5.4 and we're expecting this to go over so you want to be vigilant make sure you have a good follow through on that trigger so that you can see where this bullet lands now i've got my scope cranked up all the way to 27 power you really don't need that much I'm gonna make sure you have a right trigger pull. Everything needs to be absolutely rock solid here because if you're doing bad things with your trigger or any sort of funny business, you're gonna see the results of that downrange. Also, you wanna pick a day like today when there's not a lot of wind, although wind shouldn't really worry you too much because we're trying to get speed, but it might throw you around a little bit if you've got a small target. Another plus for our larger than normal target. Okay, let's get comfy. Okay, so we're expecting this guy to zip over the top. And now what we're going to do, we're going to try see how far over the top it goes and use our reticle to sort of estimate that. Okay, so in this case, there is a tiny bit of wind, so we got pushed off the left of the target. We would have missed regardless. And I could actually see it made a really nice little splash into the back of the berm behind that target. Okay, so that's five. So I'm going to go eight clicks. I'm going to take eight clicks off my scope. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to hold for that little bit of wind, which was about uh, 0.4. And then we should be golden. And then we'll jump back into the app. Okay, 0.4 might have been a bit too much. I mean 0.8, so we're gonna add two back to that. Let's get some more thunder sticks. I'm gonna take one off again. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so we're pretty good on the target. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna validate that by shooting the little one. Right, so real quick, before we engage the smaller target of the two to validate our information, we wanna use the truing function on our Strolog. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna open up your app. You wanna make sure again, as we said, these apps are only as good as the information you give them. So if you put nonsense in here, you're going to get nonsense out. That old saying of garbage in, garbage out is so true. And in this case, it's especially true. So you want to make sure you've got your correct bullet. You want to select the bullet from the G7 database. And how to do that, you're going to go into that menu over there. You're going to tap here on the G7. I'm just going to select Hornady. It's already selected. Make sure that I've got my 130 grain ELD match with the G7 of 0.2. 279 I'm gonna say yes so we're just double checking that that is correct we're gonna save that information now we're gonna click done and then we're gonna to head to this icon at the bottom right hand corner we're gonna tap on that it looks like the little arc into the target now you guys will see at the top there's a speed or BC truing function now for now we're not gonna go into the BC truing function that'll be a separate video completely so we know our target was at 645 meters now it's important that you have that correct you know if you have if you're slightly off on that the information once again is going to be off now in this case which was super cool the vortex razor 4000 gives me that ability to show me either the first target or the further target so that was cool so i know my distance is correct now we're going to look at our rifle what we actually needed to dial in order to hit that target now in our case it was 4.7 mrad okay so we're going to put in the 4.7 hit okay then click 
calculate. So that's actually going to give me my speed at 2812 feet per second. Then we're going to click use this speed, calculate, and then all of a sudden you'll see the little MRAD function in the bottom there. The hold shows you that you only need 4.7. Now, without further ado, let's shoot that little target and validate that information, shall we? Alrighty, so we have reversed engineered our muzzle velocity of the variables that we did have. Again, garbage in, garbage out. Now, spoiler alert, I obviously knew what the speed of this rifle was. My rifle shoots at 2,800 feet per second. So we were basically within 10 feet per second, give or take, of what our actual speed of our rifle is. Now that's pretty remarkable if you think about it. Now, how far of a distance do you need to do this? I would say, as far as you possibly can. I generally, I've done this at 520 meters and been fine at matches. And if you're gonna go for this method, you wanna try and do this after you zero your rifle at the actual match, just to make sure everything is good downrange. Now this is a quick little fix if you don't have a chronograph, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please do me a favor, if you found this video beneficial at all, make sure you are subscribed and share this video with some of your mates in some shooting groups or whatever. I really feel we're gonna grow to 100,000 before the end of the year and I need your help to do so. Thank you very much for watching. Check out some of our other tutorials over here. Or if you just wanna see us shoot and have fun, click up here and you can join the people of impact for some bonus content in this little box down here somewhere and if you're not subscribed as we said already you can do that here anyway i'll see you guys in the next one thank you very much for watching cheers